Welcome to the Collaborative Podcast. I'm your host, Spencer Krauss. Our guest today is Eli Safchai. Eli is an engineer, physicist, and maker. Uh, he recently moved here from Israel to Pittsburgh. Eli, welcome to the pod. Oh, thank you very much. I'm very happy to, see, to be here. Happy to have you. Yeah, we've been talking for, I want to say, almost a year now. Um, so we got a mutual friend, Michael Furman, who introduced us. Uh, very good guy, and he'd mentioned you were looking to move here. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like you've worked on some really interesting projects, uh, just from you know having kind of looked at your background uh, when we first met, trying to figure out a professional angle. And so uh, I appreciate you coming and doing this. Um, Thank you so much. Yeah. So one of the things when I was reading your resume, uh, initially when I first kind of was introduced to you, that I thought was amazing was, I can't remember the exact paragraph you had, but it was something on the lines of like experience with lasers, terminal ballistics, and I think, I want to say like high velocity shock waves, but I might be wrong on that last one. Um, yes, so, so my first job was to, um, to work on a transparent uh, armor, which means like windows protective against, against uh, bullets and other threats. Cool. Um, it was a, a, a funny or interesting uh, company because they've been quite small, and, but they've been there in the right place in the right time. Um, and when the US Army started to get inside uh, Iraq and um, faced all the threats um, and started to be in a war that you are not fighting armies, but you fighting guerrillas and um, threats uh, that are both in civilian and uh, armies combined together. Um, so they needed transparent armor. You needed to protect their vehicles. Um, and the company I work in was the one that doing it for the Israeli army. So they've been there in the right time and um, actually the US army t took a big con contract and he, he started to do it with another company, a big uh, consortium. Um, and they had, this consortium didn't have the luck and my company had did have the luck because um, they done some error in manufacturing and they put too much stress inside the window. And in the middle of Iraq, they started to use the, the machines and cracks started to appear. Oh, just from the structure that it was mounted, not even from armaments or anything like that. No, nothing. They, yeah. And it was even worse when they started to shoot from the okay. uh, from the roof of the vehicle. So they were so pissed off. <laughs> and, and this is just, the stuff the consortium delivered, not the stuff that your company delivered. It was our luck, yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they actually been almost thrown out of all the framework of the army. Um, Brutal. And the army approached uh, the, the company I work in and asked to, for the help. Um, and there they found themselves as one of the most important suppliers of transparent armor of the all US army. Wow. Uh, yeah, and it it's was a like contract. a huge jump. Yeah. Um, and then it was a race of getting the most light armor that was possible. And they made a second decision that to not to race, to do it as light as possible, but to do it as cheap as possible. Interesting. But still like le more 10%, but cost much less. And, and, and of course, like when you are in a development 
phase everyone is very excited about doing the best and you know getting the yep. very unique glasses you bow silicate um, a robux and other um, these are words that are new to me as a robux guy <laughs> uh, it's it, it's a yeah, furnace, silicate. okay it's a furnace glass and Got you know, it. in the in the pyrex I'm sorry it's uh, your accent so I say borosilicate and so it sounded a little different to me but yeah yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. I, yeah. Idiot. it's a problem I'm <laughs> facing a lot um, <laughs> so everyone like was going towards a really unique glasses and then we shifted to a, a glasses that were m- much cheaper and we found the, the simple way to do it and uh, and it worked again um, so th- this is was the kind of a uh, process is it kept the company alive um, but they had a, a big problem because the main business was um, making windows for cars and the competition with, with Chinese was getting to be very very hard and they tried to reduce the prices but the price it cost them to produce was the sale price of the of the Chinese so they were just selling oh I see the Chinese could operate lower because it's in China I, I don't know how but yeah. they, they, they managed to do it and so yeah. us have been done in a lot of other fields they just pushed the industry outside you can also see a lot of a glass factory all around the world getting closed because of the high competition that makes sense you don't really see textiles anywhere but certain parts of the world anymore either like I feel like there's certain industries where it just yeah. isn't economical yeah, it, 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 it's sad that you see huge area like furnaces, whatever, and everything is closed and the company is just, and all the amazing professionals just selling there like, okay, who want my advice and so on. So it, it's, it's sad, but this is how it goes. Um, so they've been focusing around like... Um, also, other civilian, part, partly civilian project, like, um, you know, trains have a ballistical standard, like... Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's, it's funny, because... Is they it are, just because they're traveling so quickly that they need to have that? So it's funny. It's different standard in the U.S. and in Europe. Okay. Um, Europe are afraid the, the standard is... What's happened if someone drunk throw <laughs> a sounds uh, like a lot yeah, of experiences I've had in Europe <laughs> and it's like from another train and it's like so the maximum speed is this train that train and another like twenty meters that makes uh, sense or kids do stuff like that you know like you'll put I mean when I, when I was kid I don't know that we ever did this but some other kids did where you put like, you know, a penny or something on a train track and let it get run over just to see. So I'm sure that annoys the engineers because now they have to design around. So in the state, it was like a completely different standard. Um, And it's sad, but like, so they've been afraid from um, hunters that play in shooting the train uh, windows. Oh, no. So it's like... Is that a common thing that people do? Does it have been a, a, a thing that people did quite a lot? Oh, wow. That's pretty um, bad. And, and all, all, all the FRA type 2 windows, you can see it in all the trains all around. You see FRA. It means that it should stop a, a low, um, like 0.22 a kind of bullet L. but a lot of times hunters use bigger calibers than that right so like you might have like a 308 or a 30-06 um, yes but this is this is a standard it's a very the, the smallest caliber yeah um, made of uh, lead 
and this is from far away yeah because you don't want to do it like no one will shoot you from so near it's like competition of very stupid guys whatsoever but it's risking yeah. life yeah for sure i mean there's passengers on those trains that's horrible uh, yes and uh the whole thing is the front window because the biggest threat and it did happen a few times that people came to the bridge and took a, a big cement block and just hang it from the bridge exactly in the place where the driver had been and it caused a horrible accident. Yeah, I would imagine you could kill somebody like that. It it did happen, and yeah. and this 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 is what the threats they are been looking for. So, you get in a standard of throw a block from twelve meter and hit it by the corner, and see that it doesn't uh, penetrate this kind of uh, like if you have protective glass or without protective glass or whatever. Yeah. But it shouldn't damage the driver. Um, yeah. And that was quite an exciting thing to do and to see. Yeah, that's um, pretty cool, actually. Yeah, and then. Uh, can you prevent loss of life that way? I mean, yeah. um, yes, and, and it, it's a cool test to do because it, you go in on a. From the, finding a place high enough throwing it, <laughs> high speed picturing, photo and... That's awesome. And to get it and, and I I have seen few of my uh, works inside uh, inside train and there it's a race you, to the bottom. A race to the bottom? Yeah, the prices to do as, as low as possible. But first you need to prove the concept and then, yeah, okay, that makes sense. So production phase. Yeah, and if you can do it a little bit less weight it's always a benefit if you can do it cheaper it's always a benefit and it's always a question if you're going to do it curved or straight yeah curved it much cost much higher and it's like it's from a fabrication perspective to yeah make sense. yes and, and it's because you, you're adding some plastic in the back side yeah to prevent the the shreds of the glass to penetrate the eyes. So like polycarbonate or something with glass on the front, I would think. Um, in the in the inner side. Yeah. You have the polycarbonate is amazing material. I love that stuff. Yeah. Wow. Well, I it, have it in my shop at home. <laughs> it's work and it's work so much better than a PMMA a polyacrylate. Is that acrylic? Is that the same thing? Acrylic, yeah. Okay. It's all the same I family. I agree. And it, and it, the, the acrylate just like breaks, and the yep. polycarbonate, if you if you design it in the right way, it's just like having a huge. It deforms. Bond. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's if when you, you when you shoot it in the um, you have. I've a shot it before just to see what would happen, you know, with a test piece in my in my lab. But you know, it's it's fat. I mean, it just it just bends in, like you said. That's all that happens. Uh, yeah, it's 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 amazing material, um, and if you do it with a high speed camera, it's like it's bent so much. Like <laughs> you wouldn't believe how. Oh, much. so it elastically deforms and then comes back, as well as the plastic deformation you can see when you do without them. Yeah, yeah, okay, it's that's much more. You have some, a lot of elastics and some plastics, but it, it's amazing to see it from the. Backside, um, that's yeah, really it's, cool. It's, it's, but you have other materials that can yeah. also perform quite well. They had some unique ADI material. That ADI. Uh, it was some brand names that they gave the the solution, but it it's worked. Cool. Um, I don't know that one yet, but I'm interested. Yeah, it's a, it's a small brand. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's exciting. Um, it was also had a lot of uh, someone coming to you with a uh, special needs. You know, this kind of bullet, uh, a very high penetrating one, uh, sometimes bombs, and so you can you go and try. And Israel is much more regulated than in the state. Because in the state, you just take a bomb and 
and <laughs> you, you find a place with her that would not harm anyone and and you do it in Israel you need yeah to we've done that some years for like the 4th of July celebration for instance so, uh, so nothing is real <laughs> like you would be in shock like how much regulation you need to pass in even with everybody be... being in the military you still can't get away with that it's it's interesting it's yeah. interesting the difference between the state and Israel like yeah like in Israel, people are, would not take guns to their home unless they really must. And there is ridiculous amount of regulation. And in one of the conferences, you, do, you have a, a military industry conferences. And I've been talking to someone and, and he was like, like how how can you be so much inside ballistics and <laughs> don't have like an fifty guns in your house and and I since then I've been visiting a lot of people that have a, a huge amount of ammunition at home and yeah. and it's amazing how different the view and that's interesting because I would have thought that would have been a part of Israeli culture just given how many people are in the military that's interesting. Yeah. It sounds like it isn't. <laughs> so no, was, it, oh, it, it's, it's it. completely isn't, and it's yeah. so much, it's very highly regulated. I think it's been a part of the threat of terror, and the, like, it was certain times that there was, if a terrorist was, like, running away and he threw his gun, no one will run after him, he will run after the gun, because it was so many guns in the area, so you can... If you took the guns out, he probably done much more benefit than catching the terrorist. Interesting. Um, it's not now, but um, it it is a question. Uh, you know, is it such a sensitive thing in the state having gun or not having guns? So, but. Even though you have much more motivation, and I, I've been living in Jerusalem, and and you are going to a place that there is some amount of threat, and you won't take a gun just because it's so such a headache. You need every every now and then you need to renew your permission and go and prove that you are okay and take a doctor and psychiatrist, whatever. It's, it's so complicated to have one yeah I got my concealed carry permit in the US I usually don't talk about politics but since it's come up you know why not uh, and it was easier than voting I mean it was very 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 easy to get that in, in Pittsburgh yeah, you just kind of showed up and they're like alright here you go <laughs> so, and it's such a different yeah. concept because in one of the conferences I been um, going to dinner with someone that had been in the industry and I was complaining how much hard it's to get a uh, highly penetratable bullets are very high regulated you, you cannot sell it outside of the state and we are supposed to protect uh, to make a new product with this kind of threat you know we need to have this kind of pattern of like you need uh, four shots so you definitely needed those bullets to test it yeah but, but yeah. you couldn't get them because you know, you couldn't get them. So he would say, oh, you know what? Uh, I have a few. Say, oh, okay, well, you have a few, but I don't. So in the end of the conference, he came with me to me. His daughter came to me and just uh, suggested, just just take them. It's okay. We, we have too many, you know. And they say, oh, I, I, I cannot take it. it, it just, it's super legal. <laughs> it's so super legal. And yeah. I was... So I said, okay, I can't, I can't take it. But somehow the regulation of Israel heard about it. And I got investigated like Are you serious? for two hours about like someone offered you and you didn't respond, told us. And I said, no, but like, it's, it's a different concept, you know, it's, but they couldn't understand it. Like so it didn't make an alarm that someone suggested you this kind of bullet. We no. need them for our work. <laughs> you know? No, they, 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 they yeah. wanted to do a, a later business with me, and you know, 
because mm-hmm. I was complaining so much how, how difficult it is to make the exam, so they wanted to make the examination yeah. at the place, which is totally fine, you know, it's, it's how, how you do, you do businesses, but wow. Yeah, it makes sense. So it, it, was, it was a funny uh, thing. Yeah, that's brutal. I, I one time, I, uh, I guess I'll tell this story. So I, um, I, I don't know, I sometimes, you know, use guns as a hobby, like I'll go to the shooting range or whatever. And so for a while, I, I'm not that into it these days because the prices are kind of high in ammunition right now. And I've just got maybe a little bit bored of it. So I'm not doing it the most. Mm-hmm. But for a while, I was going a lot. And so I had a box of nine millimeter ammunition, like 50 rounds in my in my car, just, you know, for going to the range. And the laws are different in every state in the U.S. Uh, around that stuff, and some are stricter than others. So Pennsylvania is pretty lenient on that stuff, as you know. But then New York is very, very strict on it. And so my parents live in New York. So one time I brought, um, you know, a box. Of, I brought that box just not realizing it was in there. I just hadn't cleaned out my, you know, my, you know, trunk, and it was still there from a trip to the shooting range. And I got there and one of my friends um, in Brooklyn said to me, you know, you know, that's a one year mandatory minimum prison sentence for each one of those bullets. And I was like, oh, well, I'm throwing these in the garbage immediately. <laughs> like, just getting rid of that. <laughs> well, so so I, I have been in the... Hopefully I can tell that story without like a statute of limitations. Uh, look at that, Carl, before you air this episode. <laughs> yeah, it's terrifying. I was like, I don't want anything to do with that. <laughs> Yes, so I, I will tell you a story. In my time in the army, I was, as, as almost all the Israelis, uh, I have been in the army for for three years and a little bit more. And I, in one of the wars, I, someone suggested to, to take grenades. Um, so it was spread equally between all the soldiers. It makes sense. And, I, and there was some box left. So I say, okay, we are going inside a country, so let's take some more. Um, and I, I was just like handing to, to everyone in my uh, platoon or unit. Um, and when I came back, I, uh, I, everyone had it like as long as the war continued. And I needed to go because my wife was in pregnant, so I, I got to the ultrasound with her and came back to the army. And when I came back, they say, okay, we finished the war, you can like take your bag and go. And while in the bus, I was, I saw two grenades. <laughs> Someone just left me there a bit. So, so I, I called the police, I said, okay, I have two grenades. And I like, I've been investigated for hours. Ah. I like, okay, but like, I, I just wanted to give you back. No, you wanted to trade them and then you, no, I, I didn't. I, I Why just, would I call you if that was my motivation? I should throw them away. <gasps> no, you cannot do it. Next time I will do it. No, you don't do it. Like, uh. and it's, uh, okay, we solved the issue, but it was, it was hard. To That's explain. brutal. Yeah, it was funny. Yeah. <laughs> One time I had a guy, and I might have told this story on the podcast before, so sorry if you've heard it, but I had a guy, um, I was in Central Park in New York, and I mean, yeah, I didn't have any weapons because I'm in New York, um, you know, and I was just trying to hang out with a friend and have a picnic, but some guy pointed a gun at me and stole all the money I had on me and my cell phone and, you know, like Whoa. just, yeah. Uh, and That's brutal. <laughs> yeah, we got to keep our food at least, though. We had some bags of cannoli, <laughs> so we got to keep those. But I was in a really good mood. I'd just gotten back from my first international trip to, to London and I was feeling really good about people and you know, everybody's awesome, travel's great, I love humanity and then this guy points a gun in my face and it's just like, give me all your stuff or I'll kill you. You know, and so um, basically, um, you know, I just froze up. I, I didn't really know how to handle it. Um, Cause you know, the, the pride in me, it didn't want to say, okay, here, take all my stuff. But then the self-preservation didn't want to tell him to get fucked so i just was like you know i didn't know what to do so i um they you know they they patted me down they took all my stuff what i should have done is given them my money and kept my wallet because it took forever to get new ids and car keys but um they took everything um but anyway we called the police um right after it happened and the police kept us in the central park precinct for like 12 hours you know they were like you know like are you making this up 
that you know we take this stuff very seriously. Do you know how much it costs to send up that helicopter? You know, like and he's like, yeah, I'm the victim here. Like, you know, like I've just I've just been held up at gunpoint. Like, can you please? Do you know, something like have yeah, do something first of all, and secondly, like you know, like not take up my whole night so I'm awake, you know, because they they were interrogating us like until maybe like you know three or four in the morning, and then we had to go home, and I'm like, hey, could we get maybe like a subway pass, like a metro card, that's what's called in New York, so you can get home because you know they took our wallets, we have not we have nothing, and they're like, no, figure out how to get home yourself, we don't just provide metro cards. <laughs> So like after all that, you know, they were they were just like, yeah, you figure it out, you know. So that was that wow. was brutal. Wow, that's sad. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, so next time I I don't know, I don't know if I'd call the police again in that situation, because they weren't able to do anything. <laughs> Maybe, but yeah. You know, wow. I'd rather just get to sleep and move on with my life. So then yeah, seems similar. Yeah. Well. Yes, so uh, I've been walking there a long time and it's and it was uh, a great experience. A lot of people so it was a, not, a, lot, a very interesting so because ballistics and terminal ballistics yeah. are something that people are interested in. And a lot of time I, I one in a month so a few weeks I, I will get a call or an email of someone say, okay, we found a great material, transparent, and it's exactly thin, and it can stop everything. Seems like, too good to be true. true. Like every three weeks or something like that. I, and also I, I got a company that came to Israel to show me that. Because we say, okay, if, we, if it's true, we can... Yeah. Any time, like, you're going to say details, and people just... So optimistic, didn't understand it right, or so they, they, they tried to sell me a, a piece that, you know, a transparent film, go on the glass and can stop everything. I say, okay, give me a report. So I said, no problem, we'll give you a report. And you see a report, and they say, pass, and say, no, I want like the full report. <laughs> And then you can you read it and you say, okay, it's not one layer. So they used 12 layers. They stopped 0 to 22 yeah. bullet. With 12, 12 layers. Four. Yeah, and they had like another glass uh, in, like on top of it. And like with 12 layers, you cannot see anything. Like it's completely blur. And say, okay. But if you have another thing, just tell me and send me, and I, I will. I never heard from them again. <laughs> and I, I, I even got a, a company that came from the state to Israel, like four people, very, very uh, confident about themselves, um, got very high recommend, recommendation from top industry, and still, you know, like, and in the end, they, they, they had nothing, like, I, I, I was testing them, I said, there's it's no effect like, of your, they said I have like a, a spray that makes the glass very strong, it sounds so weird, I, I didn't want to touch it, but like, one of the uh, uh, managers there say, oh, you know, that this guy from the state is very high, like, level, there is something there, like they couldn't bluff so much, but it was like a, a bluff. Uh, like yeah. it was all. Well, it sounds up. like bullshit. I mean, like, like to, to be, be able, able to have a spray, spray that, that does that, that like that. that. So there is one interesting stuff about glass that it's it theoretically it can be much stronger than what she is because they have uh, quarks on the surface. And like if you put the glass inside uh, um, something that stops the, the, the quarks, oh, it's like, make it like 10 times stronger. And that makes sense. So if you put it in the HF acid, like hydrofluoric, hydrofluoric yeah. and so the first few seconds until the quarks develop again, you can make it much harder. 
Um, That's it. So, but you would have to spray with hydrofluoric acid after it got cracked, so you would have all the stuff to mist it for it to be able to do that. So you, could, you couldn't just treat it once and then be good forever, right? So, so you need to protect it yeah. afterward. Um, the people that say that claims they that they did it, and that company say, oh, our uh, like nanocarbon tubes <laughs> just goes and catch the quarks and. Whatever, you know, it's always sound funny later on, but in the moment, you know, someone is very confident and say, okay, you know, okay, let's, let's, and, and they didn't have a choice, so I, okay, but, but they, they paid like for four tickets, highly appreciated professor, the, and, and, but like, what did you thought would happen when I check it? Like, I don't know, like, they wasted a lot of time and energy and like it's, it's, it's the kind of world that would not last for a second i don't know yeah why. that's weird why people do that do you think it's just because they wanted to sell the 40 kits um like maybe that was their end game was just to sell the the initial test pieces or did they just give those to you so they wouldn't have made any money on that i think i, I think that th th there is tendency of people to exceptionally sell people to to tell you the the story and after they told it a few times they started to believe and to increase the, the risk and 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 they, I think that, that that guy really believed it even though when I told them you know this is the result they didn't sound surprised no okay no maybe so I, I I told them okay like I told the professor there you know you have like seventy patents on your name you are very really recognized why why did you need like how did you came up to be here so you know we had his good results but you know they had like if you take in a ball twelve times you can see ten percent difference in strengths but if you tell the story enough time you know I have a, it's make a huge difference you know yeah. 10% you know 12% uh, yeah 14% you know 100% <laughs> you know it's, it's yeah. some, someone added the zero and no one fixed him and you know so um, mm. so that's a huge amount of uh, people that are so sure that they have the, the, the solution to everything. And that was amazing to see how many good guys just fell into that stuff. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so after, I think, five years in that company, I decided that the market there is, is a bit narrowed. Like in Israel, you know, not so much industry that doing ballistic terminal ballistic glasses so i say i'm a physicist i can like not only make uh to investigate the shock wave so maybe i should go a little bit backward and see what's else and other direction so i joined a laser company cool um yeah, I, I thought it's going to be so hard to to learn a new field, um, but it wasn't so so hard. Like there was some theoretics, um, and the first few months, you know, I even been staying late at night and to read and and weekends I was printing before the Saturday and reading all through the. But after a while, I they. A lot of times it's more, if you, if you need things specific to your project, there is not so much to know. Um, so the transition was quite smooth and I got a lot of help from friends that been there and was like uh, very passionate for, uh, for teaching. Yeah, makes um, sense. And, uh, and so after a few months, I, I found myself in a very convenient place 
knowing the stuff and uh, developing uh, high power lasers. Um, Wait, so like lasers for burning rather than measurement? So there was a big effort, there is still a big effort in Israel to uh, use lasers in order to take missiles. Oh, out. cool. Um, and I was a part of this uh, huge effort. Would that um, be like considered part of Iron Dome or would that be a different thing? So they call it uh, Iron Laser or Laser Dome. Laser Dome, nice. <laughs> um, and like everyone is talking about it as a, as a thing. As in every situation, there is a lot of work in this field. Um, there is a huge effort in the state about these kind of things. Yeah, um, it was like a big part of the Star Wars initiative in the 80s too, right? Yes, but as, as always, so it, it was a, a huge thing, like they done a chemical laser but the waste was so high and eventually the main problem was that, was that like when you shoot a laser, the air have a little bit of phase shifter, is working as a phase shifter. Like when you, you're looking about above a road that is hot yep. and you can see everything shifted. That makes sense. So, At a high level, I mean, I'm yeah. sure I'm... So if you want to focus something really far away you need to start from a big um, a big spot yeah so it passes every kind of side of the spot is passing a different uh, pathway and in the end it's you cannot even see a spot in the far field and you're talking about hundreds of meters otherwise it won't make sense to yeah it makes sense why would you use a laser if you know you have to be right next to the thing so one solution is to put much more energy into it <laughs> um, and the other solution is to put a lot of small uh, rays pins and to play with each phase of each one of them so each one of oh, them oh interesting and and that was and that is um it, it's all published so i like don't feel like i'm violating anything but this this is the, the main idea there um, and it's working quite good you know it's it's um, it's claimed to to, to work um, and, and they're putting a lot of money on that and uh, and I also heard that when Biden came to Israel he was they were talking about it and see if we can help and what kind of efforts they can combine together and I, I hope that it's going to happen but it's it's a again a new era like everyone been talking about it since I think it's the 60s yeah and I, I still have like a, remember the laser swords of the war, Star Wars yeah um, and there is and it's always happened like that you see a new technology and everyone thinking, wow, it's amazing. It can change the world. You can do that and that. And you can shoot uh, satellites and have swords. And afterward, <laughs> you know, you, you, you understand that there is limits and sometimes these limits are very near and you can, you can do some things with it but not getting the whole promise yeah that makes sense um i think it's happened anywhere and it's amazing to to see it as in in a engineer and in a physicist point of view yeah um, yeah for sure i mean i've had customers come to me wanting a robot that does you know 30 different things and you're like well how much money you got because <laughs> i'm not sure that's going to be feasible or you know like the current state of technology can't do this, but you know we can do all of these things. You know, so could we compromise maybe on the scope a little bit? 
usually it comes down to budget with the robotic stuff people bring bring to me where it's we can we can do it but it's just going to be really expensive or you can do it but you know it's not always going to work and you might have to have a person come in and you know guide the robot in some edge cases the chemical lasers i'm really interested in because i had a coworker who worked on i think there was like a boeing aircraft that had one of those inside and um he was telling me about it a little bit and i just went down this wikipedia rabbit hole where i was reading and it seems really interesting, but I mean, like you said, I guess if it's wasteful, it just isn't practical from a fuel perspective. And uh, if I understand correctly, the main problem there was first of all, you had so much toxic waste that came out of the laser. Yeah, and just shot out of the bottom of the plane, basically, right? I mean, it was, yeah, so yeah. like. In the end, everyone just left this, and um, you you can reach like megawatts, um, but you you needed to waste a lot of material on it, and it it didn't hold. Like eventually, when they make the calculation and the probability of it switching the target and it, it didn't work. I, it wasn't I, economical. I, I wasn't there to oh. the, when they made the decision, but from what they heard, they just say it's not economical. It won't make a uh, make sense. But now, now they are turning, you know, much more um, after the is other industry been to a lot, and now you understand that there is some possibilities that you can reach, but you can be up to this kind of level, up to that kind of uh, distance. Um, yeah. It takes time to the, to the machine to lock on the um, missiles. And if you're shooting 10 missiles, it's, it's all calculation of how much time you need to be on the target, how much time, how much miss missiles there are, how much time it takes to lock. Yeah, that whatever. makes sense. But, but it's, it's an exciting thing because there is a uh, financial point of view to this kind of anti-missiles missiles in Israel because every missile they, that um, the guy from like our enemies throwing to us is costs nothing and you're shooting back with the Iron Dome and it costs you much more like a hundred times more and because it's just a much more targeted missile is yeah like it's very complicated yeah Makes sense, but it's it's funny because everyone's speaking now about uh, AI, and yep. you know, as as a people that play, been playing a little bit with AI, you know that this it's a promise, but it's <laughs> so it's a very very high limits on on where it can go. Yep, in the current state. Correct. Yeah, like who knows what the hell will be around? You know, ten years, twenty years, thirty years, fifty years from now. But, uh, but right you know, now, it's not... Yeah. They can put it to the AI and it will solve your problem. No, it's won't. it won't solve your yeah. problem. No. Well, and I, I was talking to a layperson the other day where she believed that like AI was sentient. She's like, is AI sentient? I'm like, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know. I guess it depends how you define sentience, but probably not. Yeah, it's a... Or like there's companies, like you mentioned, the people that would come to you with the, you know, it's this thick and it'll stop anything. I feel like companies do that with AI too, where they're like, you know, our AI can do everything. You know, like, really can it? You know, like, you know there's I, some impressive things, but like, I don't know, to make a wide, or like just to say you'll be able to solve any problem with AI, I think is is an over promise. So. It will do a lot of jobs, like, like in robotics, like you probably also go out on the Terminator and as yeah. a very sophisticated robot in yeah. 2000, it would be like everyone is robots and whatever. And you now understand, you know, okay, like it's now coming back, you know, the robots can do this kind of task a little bit better and this kind of task, but you know, we are 20, 30, 40 years after we started to speak about robots and 
you have some complicated machines, but robots that imitate men in, well, even autonomical vehicles, it's yeah. a very complicated Well, even like system. in a chat room, I think, didn't somebody finally pass the Turing test that way, right? Like pretty, like a few years ago, where they were able to convince that like a person, that a chatbot was a person. But like, I mean, that took forever to do. And I mean, I don't know, I haven't interacted with it. Have you, have you seen the AI generated art stuff yet that's been out? So there's like Dolly is one of them. Uh, I think from Microsoft with OpenAI, and if I'm getting any of this wrong, please correct me. But there's, um, there's a bunch of them. There's one that's called Mid Journey and you can describe, you know, like, I want to see a rabbit, rabbit playing poker on Mars. And then it'll make you like a picture of a rabbit playing poker on Mars somehow. And some of them are really impressive. Like the Microsoft one, I, I was, it's a great thing to do when you're out with your friends drinking if one of you has this on their phone and then you send it to like a you know a data center and it sends you back these pictures it's it's kind of interesting it's it could be amazing yeah that's pretty cool i i was impressed by it anyway and then i've seen ai and i'm not an ai expert but i mean i've i've just seen it applied by people i've worked with um one that seems kind of cool is being able to do like kinematics like forward and mainly inverse kinematics, it seems, because that's the more computationally intensive, but being able to have AI sort of abstract, you know, what you would get with this multi-matrix multiplication and give you an answer um, for like a robotic, you know, so you can get the runtime down, like that seems like a good application uh, as far as I can tell, you know, I don't know. It seems like there's there's good applications, but to say it's gonna do everything or be able to make human decisions yeah. is, is totally fallacious. We are, we are not there yet. It's, it's, it's a big dream, you know, in, in, in humanity that like tend to dream far and then, you know, you have the expectation and then it drops down <laughs> and in the end, you know, you find yourself in the middle. That's like, like the garter hype curve that you're describing. Yes, yes. Yeah. So it's, it's, <laughs> this is exactly the thing. Um, and so we are now in the, I think in the in the false uh, yeah, uh, peak. peak of peak of over excitement or whatever they call it. Yes, yeah. yes it is. And <laughs> the trough of disillusionment. <laughs> yeah. Plateau so, of reality. I'm using the wrong words, but I feel like. Yeah, I, I also. But the, the 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 idea is very straight. Um, so. Uh, so I I I've been playing with lasers for a long time. Um, there is some application of the same idea in the um, welding industry. Nice. Yeah, I know. Laser welding is very cool. It's amazing yeah. stuff. You can weld, you can cut, and it's everything. It's, it's actually putting a lot of energy toward a, a small spot. And yeah, the focusing problem that you mentioned doesn't really exist because you're right next to it typically in those applications. Um, yes, and you don't care if it's a little bit wider or, um, you know, it's going to be one millimeter, 1 1.1, 1 1.2 millimeters. No, no one yeah. really cares For sure. so much. Yeah, the tolerances and, and laser cutting and laser welding seem to be and admittedly, I don't have as much direct experience with laser welding. I, I've heard about it from colleagues, but I've done a bunch with laser cutting and laser engraving and looking at like expensive, you mm -hmm. know, five axis laser cutters um, for certain things at work. But that's that's about as, as far as I've gotten in the weeds on it. But it's yeah, you're right. It's it's a really neat field. Yeah. So so there is like in that company, they, they try to, to develop uh, welding solutions that if you control the exact amount of heat and where you put it sometimes you can get better weldings makes sense um but it's it's also a field that like you see a lot of very cheap solution come inside the industry i i bought a 3d printer and you can buy additional head to do engraving and it's cost eighty dollars or something like that it's so it's probably a diode laser i would think yes nice it, 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 doing it, it works yeah it works. <laughs> that's cool um, i got i got a uh, i got a carnegie mellon trash pick laser uh right out of grad school i think i was in grad school 
uh, and I've been running it for, for a while now, but it's, it's like a 2005 laser cutter, um, and I had to spend $2,000 making it work, but I thought that was a good deal. Um, I got it out of the garbage at Carnegie Mellon. It's great. It's, uh, it's a, I want to say it's a 30 watt system, like, like 25, 30 watts, but it's got this awesome TIG welded enclosure for the laser at tube where I guess it just uses that for cooling. Like it's got all these fins on it. It's, it's kind of welding porn. And then, um, the way it works is just a series of mirrors and it's, it's awesome. I like that thing a lot. So all the laser industry actually been going through a revolution or a big change, shift of focus from the CO2 lasers. Like, yeah, which is what I'm running. Yes. So towards a uh, diodes, if all, all in fiber oh, kind of lasers. That's interesting. So even on like a larger scale laser, you could have a fiber coupled diode laser? Yeah, so you're using diodes and you then you amplify your Would that signal. Would be like a knife array? Hmm? Would that be like a knife array, a knife edge array? Where you have like a bunch of diode lasers all together focusing on the same point and then being transmitted through a, through a fiber? Yes and no. Okay. Because you have you have this kind of small uh, diodes away going all together toward inside the fiber, but then you use a pumping scheme. Um, you use a euterbium or or other kind of special uh, um, metals or whatever you put inside the glass that. You actually use that diode, which are um, low quality laser, and you make it toward a very high quality laser. So you put a high quality laser and you just pump it. You, you just use uh, um, the diode to, um, to increase the original laser. So you can have a, oh, single, interesting. a single mode um, laser with hundred of watts and that makes sense it can be also polarized and that's that is a very uh, unique and the prices of the diodes are going deeply down like I saw it in the years I've been in this industry and from few dollars per watt you can have less than like much less and that's pretty cool. They, they cut the price every few years, and and it's amazing. And it's it. And if if you phase shift those by a little bit, you're saying you can have longer distances that you can that you can shoot a laser without having to worry about the focusing as much. If you have few of them together, you can correct the phases so they cancel the the shift. Uh, That's the pretty phase amazing. Shift. It's a, it's it, like if if anyone want to learn about more about it, there is so many literature that deal with that, and um, also from the specific company I've been working with, um, and it, it's 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 very interesting. But for cutting, you can use a very short distance laser. And the industry is shifting toward fiber laser instead of CO2 lasers because the CO2 laser need much more maintenance and everything is more expensive. While yeah. the fiber laser, the prices is going down. Couldn't you fiber couple a CO2 laser though in theory? I mean, like is, is a fiber laser like really its own type of laser or you mean a fiber coupled diode laser? Because um, to my understanding, the fiber is just the the glass umbilical that connects like an off the side laser source to where you're trying to get the laser energy at. But I, I might be misunderstanding. So yes, so you, you can couple the CO2 laser inside a flexible glass. Yeah, um, but usually, that wouldn't be a fiber laser technically. I don't think that that okay. count, but I, I'm not like 100% no worries. I'm sure curious. about it. If like technically, if you can do it like 
as if I you just, can have a, a big fiber and, but whatever in the end it's it's a different different technique like if you're using a co2 media in order to amplify your a uh, to make a beam of laser or you use like a, a single source of laser and you pump it with a, another laser and use this as uh, amplification amplification method in order to get uh, yeah, a yeah the later, later one is how like what we think, think of as a fiber laser, laser works which is where you have a bunch of laser sources, sources. So you've yeah. got is, is that, that am i understanding correctly or am i so basically you have like your source going in one fiber and then you yeah. have a combiner which a lot of a diode laser are going together they all mix in uh, so it's kind of like the Death Star, Star from Star Wars. Um, yes, but as, so, but if you have you are inside the this kind of fiber, you have limitation of how much power you can get out of it. And there are amazing companies that getting more and more toward kilowatts, you know, few kilowatts, but you cannot take too much inside the, this fiber because there is some limitation of heating and you need to take the, all the intensity out of the glass and there is uh, there is a material and there is limits of how much the material can go through without having effects that uh, deteriorate it in, and that's all. But if you have a few of them together and it's going through the air there is mainly no real limit on how much energy you can take out. The problem, and it sounds great, but the problem is that in the end, you know, the industry need like five kilowatts, 10 kilowatts, but having more than that, you know, so what, what can you, like, it's already cutting very good. Yeah. Why do you need like hundreds? Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe the military. military. Yeah, so specific yeah. application, but uh, they need to find the market yet. Yeah, it makes, makes sense. sense. Makes a lot of sense. All right, so, so I feel like we should probably cut it there just because of time today, mm -hmm. but um, we, we should do this again. again. I had a lot of fun with, with you coming on. Is there anything you want to plug or, you know, like promote while you're on the show? Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm now at, at, at Pittsburgh and really... Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for something interesting to do. Um, I'm still consulting companies, but uh, uh, there is such an interesting industry around, and I, I, I'm looking for new opportunities, actually, in this stage of uh, life. Nice. Awesome. Sounds well, great. Eli, thanks for coming on. It was a lot of fun. Thank you for hosting me.